Hello, hello, hello. Happy Get Crackin' on Christmas. It's so great to see you guys here. Uh, thank you for those of you that are joining me live. As always, if you're catching the replay, I appreciate that as well. Happy Wednesday. So yeah, Get Crackin' on Christmas was last Thursday and last Thursday, I and my creative crew was setting up the resort and conference center here in Hyannis for my in-person Crop on the Cape event with 300 attendees. Whew, so I was not going to be able to go live. <laughs> but I did still share my cards with you guys, and I'm really excited to share my process with you guys today. Hello, hello. We've got, it's 7 p.m. in Italy. That's a perfect time to watch a live. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Bo. Hi, Brianne. Hi, Libby. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Claire. Hello, Andrea. Lots of people popping in. Yay. Um, so I was inspired to play with alcohol inks. Um, Tim Holtz had just recently done a live uh, playing with alcohol inks, and it inspired me. And not gonna lie, I find it really relaxing to play with alcohol inks, and I knew that that was kind of the speed I was gonna be at this week. I'm still kind of recovering from the weekend, and I thought that it would be a perfect demo and speed of creating for me. <laughs> Hello, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so get cracking on Christmas really quick for those of you guys that don't know, this is something that I host every month. I always post my card on the third Thursday of the month. And within that blog post, I'll let you know when I plan on going live. Honestly, it kind of bounces around depending on my schedule. And, um, and yeah, so it looks like I'm frozen a little bit. That's weird. Let me see what's going on here. All right, I wonder if it's my computer. Um, hmm. Let me know in the comments, you guys, if I am frozen for you or if it's just my computer, which it very well could be. Of course, Chris isn't here right now, my internet guru. I know I have a bit of a delay, so just let me know if everything seems okay. All right. I think what I'm gonna do is um, once I go down to my desktop, I might restart my laptop, which is what you're seeing my face on. Hello, Andrea. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I, I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. I Who knows? All right. So, um, yeah, so Get Kraken on Christmas is every third Thursday of the month. My thought process is, is if I create um, a few holiday cards throughout the year, then I will have a nice stack of cards come the fall. I don't know about you guys, but the fall just is really a busy time for me. And the closer we get to Thanksgiving here in the US, the less chance I'm gonna have to get cards made in time to get them out in the mail. So, and then this is kind of my way of justifying all of the purchases I make. I love holiday stamps. You guys know I love snowflakes and snowmen. Um, and it also gives me more time to play with uh, different techniques and not feel like rushed. I know many, many people will mass produce their holiday cards and make, you know, one design and make a bunch of those. I personally get a little bored doing that. So this is a fun way for me to be able to play with more techniques, more supplies, in this case, dust off a supply. And yeah, so we're going to just jump right in. Let me know in the comments, you guys, if you're creating along with me today. Um, 
that's also kind of my thought process is you guys can join me for these monthly lives and listen and watch, but also start working on your own cards as well. Exactly. Brianne just reminded me, I love paper snowflakes and paper snow people. I don't want real life um, snowflakes and s snowmen or people. Yeah, no, 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 no. And we actually lucked out really well um, this year on Cape Cod. So I'm very excited about that. All right, I am going to restart my computer. So I'm not going to be able to see comments for just a minute. I really think maybe that's why I froze and I'd rather do it now um, while, I, while I can. And just so you guys know, um, I saw Melanie's comment that she loves my hoodie. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be doing a pre-order for new crafty gear on my website um, early April. I don't have an exact date, but early April. So stay tuned for that in my email newsletter. All right. So we have our Merry Alcohol Ink cards. And again, like I mentioned, I was inspired by Tim Holtz's recent live. And he shared some of his tips and tricks and techniques, which I, of course, gobbled up. He is so full of information, and I always learn um, so much from him, which I'm pretty sure um, you guys do as well. All right, let's see here. Give me one second, you guys. I am back up and running with... Um, with my laptop, so let's um, bring that back in again. Thank you for your patience. You know, there always has to be something, right? Always something. All right, hello, Danielle. All right. Yeah, so my alcohol inks, you guys might actually see a peek of them over on the wall. I have them all displayed because I love just seeing the rainbow colors. And even with that, I still don't play with them enough. So I'm really, really excited to um, share with you guys what I am creating today. So for my um, three cards, it's so funny. I hardly ever can make just one once I get going. But for my three cards, what I did for these two is I actually heat embossed the outline um, ornaments stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. So this is um, a holiday stamp that I hadn't had, hadn't given any love to yet, which is what I like to use for my Get Cracking on Christmas. And so I heat embossed it with gold embossing powder. Um, my favorite gold embossing powder is the Brutus Monroe Gilded Gold. Um, I do have all of the supplies or most of the supplies listed in the comments um, in the description of this video. So if you guys want to uh, be enabled from those and I heat embossed them onto Yupo paper. So I still prepped my um, paper with the cottontail powder tool from the rabbit hole designs, which is my favorite whenever I'm doing any heat embossing. And you guys can see, you know, real life here, there's a little bit of warpage to the Yupo paper because it Yupo paper is plastic, so I added heat to it. So there is a little bit of bubbles and bumps, but once you put it onto your card base and trim it down, you really don't have that issue. So don't, don't worry about that. I will tell you when I heat embossed these, I used um, my Ranger heat tool. I did not use an embossing gun. So it did take a minute more to get the embossing to melt, but that way it was a little bit more of a diffused heat and the embossing gun I felt would have warped it more. So that's just a um, suggestion for you. So I have two backgrounds here with it embossed. And then I also, which I think we're just gonna use one today. And then I also just have a plain piece of Yupo where I will show you how I did the alcohol lift ink um, technique as well. 
All right, so let's go ahead and actually start with our plain piece of um, Yupo. And just so you guys know, this is the alcohol lift ink. So you can see how that ink pad actually pulls the ink away in the stamp design. And that's that ink pad here that we'll just use in uh, just a minute. Yes, this is a new one, Craft More, Worry Less. I think this is my favorite of the new designs. And um, I'm so excited for you guys to be able to pre-order exactly what you want, colors, sizes, styles, designs. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, Tiffany just said the rabbit hole designs, Cottontail Powder Tool is her favorite as well. I love it. And I've been using this for quite a while now, and I haven't even had to refill it yet. I do stock it in my online shop, and I do stock the refills. Um, but as much as I use it, I haven't had to refill it yet. So that's pretty cool. All right. So this, <laughs> Brienne said, has anyone else noticed how purple gems cards are? I don't know if Libby is still here. Uh, but she sent me a text before the live that she's like, if I watch your live, will I be able to learn how to make this magic? I think she said something like, because this is what dreams are made of because of all the purple. I think I feel like I've decided, you guys, I'm just going to start making all the purple things because those of you that love your purple are so passionate about your love for purple that then, you know, you're excited to see um you know, what I'm creating. <laughs> so I'm noticing a very long delay this today. So just bear with me as I'm trying to answer your questions. If it seems like I am not answering your question right away, um, it's definitely um, the delay. All right, so we have a plain piece of Yupo cardstock. Um, it's made of, I shouldn't say cardstock, Yupo paper. It's made of plastic. Um, and what's great about it is when I start creating my background, if I absolutely can't stand it, I could clean this off completely with either blending solution or um, isopropyl alcohol. I do have um, some of the Adirondack blending solution and some isopropyl alcohol. We're going to use a little bit of both today. And then I have some alcohol inks. Now, you'll notice um, a lot of my alcohol ink supplies are the old brand. This Adirondack brand is no longer through Ranger. They kind of redesigned and revamped their bottles. But I'm still working through um, some older bottles. So um, I think actually a class I took with Tim a million years ago, he gave me kind of a lot of opened alcohol inks. So I have multiples of a lot of colors and some colors that I have are no longer available. Um, but they, but these colors that I'm using today are still available. So I'm gonna be using Cool Peril, uh, Wild Plum, and Indigo today. Those are the three colors that I'm gonna kinda play with. And um, then as far as tools, so I have the old school um, distress marker sprayer, all right? And um, this is actually my favorite. Um, when the distress markers went away, they also released this um, air blower. This is the alcohol ink air blower. I'm sorry, mine are a bit dusty because they sit up on a shelf. Um, but... So they both work fairly similarly. I think I like this pointed nozzle versus this wider one, but I use both interchangeably. So this is really nice. Um, but in the last live, Tim was sharing how he has started to use this Conair um, hair tool. So of course, like many of you, you know, we had to run out and order it and try it out. And I actually, I have enjoyed it. Um, I understand kind of this motion with your hand is hard on some people. So having this option to be able to blow your inks around without um, squeezing with your hand is great. So I have found I'm liking to kind of combine the two, okay? So you'll see me use both of those today. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. 
Um, the first thing that I am going to do is um, just start by adding some blending solution to my Yupo paper. And then Brienne said, a Creative Chick alcohol ink class would be pretty fun. I agree, Brienne, and it is on my class to-do list. So, you know, stay tuned. Don't stay tuned, like, by holding your breath, because it's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, but it's going to happen at some point, for sure. Um, so I'm going to start, I like to kind of start with the lightest color that I'm going to be working with, which in this case is the Cool Peril. And I'm going to just drip some color right where I put the blending solution. And this is when I would use this hand blower and just start to move it around. Um, now, I like to get my inks to be really, really wispy. Um, what's fun about this cool, um, oh, is it Cool Perry? And I'm saying Peril. Oh, yeah, Cool Perry. Sorry. The eye, the dot for the eye is so close, I thought it was Peril. Um, cool Perry. What I like about this Cool Perry color is it's magical. It like changes colors, not only when you mix it with other colors, but also like see how it's becoming like a pink up here when the air touches it. I love it. I think it's, I do think it's so magical. And it's one that you should have in your stash just because of how it really changes and morphs. It kind of reminds me of unicorns, like it's just magical. But look how pretty so far. And what we want to do with this background is I want to cover it pretty mostly with ink because this is the one we are going to do the cool, um, the alcohol lift ink technique with. All right. Um, so now I'm going to add a little wild plum. And I'm going to add that right in where I had ink before. And you can see, you can keep your alcohol ink bottles open while you're working with them. They're designed in a way that um, they're not going to dry out or evaporate on you. So while you're working with them, you don't need to uh, recap them. Uh, Callie's asking a great question. How is the Conair different from the Ranger Heat Tool? It's, it's not as hot. So the Ranger heat tool is different from an embossing gun because it has a diffused heat. It kind of does a spread heat instead of a concentrated pointing heat. And then the difference between the Ranger heat tool and the Conair tool is it's not as hot. I could keep my hand on this and I'm not gonna burn my hand. And this is the Conair heat tool. But with the Ranger heat tool, it could get pretty hot and you need to kind of move your hand around. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> yay, I'm glad to hear you guys would like an alcohol ink class. Um, hopefully, you know, it, again, it's on my list. Um, it seems like we're trending one distress class, technique class a year. Um, cause last year we did the distress sprays, stains and mediums. The year before that was inks. And then this year was the, um, Distress watercolor pencils. So I'm hoping, you know, we'll we'll bump it up a little bit more than one a year, but we'll see. Um, all right, so I just added some more blending solution and I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a little bit of indigo. And I think why some people get a little nervous using alcohol inks is you really have no control. Um, I can manipulate it a little bit, right, with my air tool, um, no matter what type of air tool I'm using, um, deciding which way I'm going to point the air and move the inks around. But there's not a whole lot of control. And I've learned in all of my classes that I teach um, that once you guys start losing control, you get a little nervous. Um, but I would just suggest for you is get a few sheets of Yupo and just play. Don't have an end game in sight, but just play and learn how the inks move and learn how they move around. And, um, you know, try to let your um, 
let your reservations go and don't have, you know, this focus on, oh, I have to have pink over here and blue over here. Just play. Now, this spot of indigo right here is not moving anymore, right? I can't get that blob to move right here. So what you can do is just add a little bit more blending solution. And then that kind of loosens that ink up and I'm able to then move it around. And that's what's so fun about this is it's like full, very fluid. Um, there's no, you know, it's it doesn't ever have to be finished. <laughs> you can keep playing and playing and playing and playing. <clears throat> so I've been using the hand tool mostly or all always. So in a minute, I will bring in that Conair um, hair tool and show you guys that. Um, I was pleasantly surprised um, how fun it was to use it. But let me just kind of move some more of this around. <laughs> Brienne says she's resisting the urge to shove off the mess off her desk and get inky. Well, you know, Brienne, I'll never stop you from that. Shove it away. Play, play, play. All right, so now I'm adding some more blending solution down here. Um, and then I'm going to go in with that cool Perry first. I just like it as a base. I think it's so, so pretty. And now let's go ahead and bring in the Conair Con heat tool. So you can see it blows it much faster. So you kind of have to, um, you kind of have to watch your, watch your inks and see where you want it to go. I had it on high just then. I just put it down to low and it's a little bit, it's more manageable for sure. But what's nice about this is not only does it move the inks around, I find that it also helps dry the inks as well a little bit faster. But you're not going to get any warping on your Yupo paper at all because, like I said, it's a warm heat, but it's not a hot heat. All right. So now that we have that base, I'm going to go in with a little bit more blending solution. And let's go back to Wild Plum. And then also some indigo at the same time. And I'll go back to this Conair tool. The Conair tool definitely takes some getting used to for me just because I have been using that hand um, pump for so long. And because it is drying the inks at the same time, I find that you don't get as much movement but it is nice when you're doing a large surface. It's a lot easier on your hands, for sure. Thank you, guys. The hard part, I find, after making some alcohol backgrounds is, like, chopping them up and using them. <laughs> I think they're so pretty on their own um, that often you don't really want to, quote unquote, feel like you're going to ruin them. But just try to let that go and know that, <clears throat> you know, you can continue to make them beautiful and utilize them in beautiful projects. So you can see with the air tool, um, I find I have more movement longer, which is nice if I'm trying to spread color, which is exactly what I'm trying to do for today because I'm going to be using that Lift Ink um, ink pad. So I want an, a good amount of base color and I do want the color to be pretty dark so that the design will show up. All right. And I'm just going to add a little bit more up here of something, maybe some wild plum. I 
feel free. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If I missed any, uh, feel free to say them again. Sometimes when I'm looking down and creating, I miss a comment or two. But alcohol inks definitely, because of their fluid nature, really make my mermaid heart so happy. I really should play with them more and more and more and more. All right. So I feel like I have a good coverage of ink. Um, I do want it to be fairly dry. So I'm going to actually just use this Conair tool to make sure any of the thicker areas of ink are drier. Hello, Cindy. Uh, happy lunch break. So, so this is um, the Distress Marker Air Tool, which is very similar to the Alcohol Ink Air Tool. And then this is a Conair hair tool, which is linked in the um, description of this video. Hi, Linda. Oh yeah, Tim Holtz's um, index that Zoe and her husband work on is really great if you're trying to keep track of what supplies you own and what supplies you still need to uh, collect, right? I'm just seeing if any of those really dark spots are tacky. They're a little bit, so I'm just gonna dry them for a little, for another second. Thanks, Libby. Um, yes, yeah, so the Conair tool is much easier on your hands, right? Because I'm just moving it around. Um, but I do find you lose even more control, and it does dry things um, much faster. So it just all depends on what look you are going for, right? All right, so now we have this beautiful background. Um, we are going to use the Lift Ink um, ink pad. And I just realized I never, oh, I actually do have paper towels in my studio. I try not to use a lot of paper towels in the house, but I forgot. I do have um, some shop paper towels, so we're good. Okay, I thought I was going to have to run, run behind the magic curtain and um, get a paper towel out of the kitchen. But let's see. So I'm going to grab um, my Misty. I'm gonna move my bottles, my alcohol ink bottles that are now open, so that I hopefully don't spill them. And we are going to stamp our um, outline ornaments with the um, alcohol lift ink. Thank you guys. No worries about being late. You can always catch the replay after. So Cindy says she would love to learn more Tim Holtz techniques. So Cindy, I know you've done some classes with me, but make sure you have done my distress technique classes. I have three different ones available on my website, and um, that will definitely help you start to learn some more techniques. Thank you, Miss Brienne. All right, so I just placed the stamp down, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and use that alcohol lift ink. All right, and I wasn't sure. I hadn't used my alcohol lift ink in a long, long time. I was like, oh boy, do I need to re-ink it or whatever, but nope, it seems to still be working fine. 
Um, it's hard to tell if you've re if you've inked a stamp completely, so I just kind of go overboard and I go around and make sure I tap the ink pad everywhere. Ooh, raining in North Carolina. We've got some sunshine today. It looks like some gray skies are rolling in. I had both black kitties in the studio with me, but right now I only have Jack. Gus Gus has gone elsewhere. I'm not quite sure where, and Harley's fast asleep on the couch in the living room. All right, so we are going to go ahead and stamp this. Thank you, Cindy. Good morning, Joy. And I just wanna make sure I'm pressing really well. And there we go. So it doesn't look like much when you first stamp it. We're gonna do some buffing, but you can already kind of see the pattern. See how it took the ink away? Um, I forgot to kind of do this last time, but I'm gonna try. This is just a piece of Distress White Heavy Stock, and I'm gonna stick that down and see what ink we can get off of our stamp because that's exactly what's happening is this lift ink is pulling the alcohol ink from our background. Ooh, pretty. This is so pretty. So see, and I forgot to do this when I made my original set of cards. I just kind of went to town and cleaned my stamp and um, I had forgotten. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for uh, popping in on your lunch break. All right, so I'm just gonna set this aside. I'll clean my stamp later. You do wanna make sure you clean your stamp after you use the alcohol lift ink so that it doesn't leave any of that um, solution on your stamp. All right, so now we're going to grab a paper towel. And very rarely will you hear me tell you to use a paper towel, but it is a good idea um, to use a paper towel for this part. And what we're going to do is just kind of buff where the stamped image is. And what that's gonna do is really make the image pop. And it is picking up some of the ink, so you'll wanna kinda move to different parts of your paper towel. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more, but it is probably tricky for you guys to see on the camera, but it's definitely whiter down here versus up here. And then when I go in with the paper towel, you'll kind of see. Oh yeah, lots of raining in especially Southern California, right? Kelly and I were talking about it yesterday before we went live for the Crop and Create event um, for the little meet and greet crazy how much rain you guys are getting. All right, I have a couple parts in this center that are a bit sticky. Um, I think what I'm going to do, because now I just got a little bit of paper towel stuck to it, I'm just going to take a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol Just a little bit to try to break these sticky parts up. You don't want to do it too much because it is going to overshadow um, the stamped image. There we go. Just to kind of, I got some paper stuck. So, but you can see how forgiving alcohol inks can be, right? There we go. But see how fun that is? Right? So fun. And when I was designing these cards, you know, 
you don't see the stamped image like as crisp and as clear as maybe some people would want it, but I really kind of liked that. I liked the kind of the illusion of ornaments in the background. So, hello, hello. Thank you guys for joining in for my get cracking on Christmas. All right, so now what we are going to do is trim this down. Um, we're gonna go ahead and trim this down. And of course, you know, I gotta bring in the new rotary trimmer from Tim. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I like how it doesn't take up a lot of space. Because I don't know about you guys, when I am creating, I have very, very little space to work because, you know, you got to have all the supplies near you, right? And it's very, very easy to push down. Not a whole lot of effort. I actually just realized I want to make it four by um, five and a quarter. So we'll have a little white edge but it cuts little strips very, very easily. Yupo is really easy to cut anyways, just because of the thin nature of it. Um, but I can see I'm gonna be quickly using this trimmer more and more and more. All right, so we've got our background here and we're gonna set um, this one aside, right? And then we're gonna make one more background with the image that I already gold embossed. All right. Yes, that's true, Bo. Um, you can use gold foil on those sticky, sticky areas. Let me see if I have mine really close right here. I think I do. Um, ah, here it is. It's literally this little pack of foils from Ranger. And you can see this is exactly like what I use this package for, is to press it onto sticky areas. So let's go ahead and do that. This is not um, hot foil foil, okay? That is a difference. It is um, the foil that you would use like deco foil for toner type things. Oh yeah, we can never go wrong with adding a little gold into this project, right? That's what the sentiment is gonna be anyways. So thank you for mentioning that. You can see that just added a little bit of metallic. Yes, Brienne, you definitely do. I know you've been helping Liddy with some class kits. You're going to be helping me with some class kits. It's a workhorse. But what I love about it, too, is it's not cumbersome. It's not a heavy trimmer. Um... It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's very lightweight. And for that, I also really, really love it. <clears throat> Let's see. Yay. Awesome. All right. So now we have, like I said, our gold embossed background on Yupo. So it did warp the paper a little bit, the Yupo paper. But I'm not worried about that because when I add it to my card base um, with some really strong double-sided tape, it's going to... Uh, flatten out really nicely. So don't worry about that type of stuff. This time I am going to use isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to use um, the isopropyl alcohol when you're working with the alcohol pearls. I am not working with alcohol pearls today, but, um, but when you're working with alcohol inks, you could use the isopropyl alcohol or the blending solution. They both kind of move around differently and it's fun to um, experiment and play with both of them, I think. 
as always, whenever you guys are playing with a new medium, you know, you can listen to me and get some tips and tricks, but you really should experiment with whatever you would like to do and try different things. You might like how something works better one way versus the other, and maybe that's something that I don't enjoy as much or what have you. It's always these tutorials, classes I offer are great, but they're not the be all end all. You should always um, play with, you know, your own experimentation as well. So I just started with the cool Perry and now I just put in some wild plum. You can see how it's still moving around. I'm going to try to keep this one pretty light. So I don't think I'm going to bring any indigo in. We'll see. We'll see if I end up doing it, but I think I'm going to just stick with the Cool Perry and the Wild Plum. I'm telling you guys, that Cool Perry is really just such a magical color, and it takes on all these different looks and colors, depending what it's mixed with, depending how much air it has. I love it so much. Yes, so the new trimmer does have replacement blades, Cindy. But uh, Tim was telling us makers, as he was telling us about the trimmer in one of our Zooms, uh, that Tonic kind of laughed at him when he said that there needs to be a replacement blade because you're pretty much not going to need to replace it. But Tim knows that, you know, when you're investing in a tool, you want to know that you'll be able to replace uh, parts like the blade. So they did make a replacement blade, but I don't think it's something that you need to buy right when you buy the trimmer because uh, it's a rotary blade, so it is self-sharpening. <clears throat> Brienne, I made 900 pieces of craftiness. I love it. I love it. You guys that enjoy kidding and helping um, those of us that enjoy teaching, like Libby from Hero Arts and me, I thank you because... I do not enjoy kidding. All right, so I've got some more isopropyl alcohol down. I'm doing the cool Perry as a base. And again, we don't need to fill all of this with color as much as I did with the um, one I wanted to do lift ink on. But I do like, there is something to be said with alcohol inks and keeping some white space, but to help this image, this stamped image kind of pop, I do think it's nice to have some color down. If you were just doing a background with no stamping, maybe maybe a watery mermaidy background, for example, um, keeping some white space would be really, really pretty. And then maybe you're gonna, you know, color and stamp and die cut um, a mermaid and pop her up off the. Um, top, top of the background, but for this case, I do like to kind of fill it with a decent amount of color. All right, I'm going to add a little wild plum, and it's all just kind of seeing where the inks take you, right? Um, I put some ink down, I move it around, I see what it does, and then I see if I want some more somewhere. That's why I think alcohol inks can be a little scary because they are so fluid and you don't have a ton of control over them. Um, but I find it uh, very relaxing um, just to kind of like very similar to when I make inky backgrounds with distress inks. I just kind of let the medium dictate the path we're going to go on, you know, and I find that very relaxing sometimes. Ooh, yes. This is a good trimmer, Cindy. You say you only have a quote-unquote basic trimmer. This is like the royalty of trimmers. I don't think you can go wrong with it. I think somebody posted in the Tim Holtz Addicts Facebook group all of the Tim Holtz tonic trimmers. Um, and I feel like maybe she nicknamed them like the daddy, the mommy, the baby, the junior, like, and it was so cute. She had this little story about them all lined up. I love these little, like, white spots that are happening. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me back it up a little bit on the camera. 
They're really, really fun. And if you use isopropyl alcohol, you can still go in with blending solution. Um, it's not bad. You're not going to mess anything up. You can see the blending solution acting, reacting to the inks. I'm going to move that around. Yeah, the foil on that last card was really pretty. Thank you again, uh, Bo, for reminding me of that. It's so funny because I literally have those little sheets specifically for that. And it's a miracle. I found them in my studio very quickly, you guys. <laughs> oh, everything has a place in a home, but it is still a little bit of chaos. All right, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to bring some indigo in, maybe on these two diagonal corners, just to bring a little pop of dark. I don't know. Let's try it. Right? I'm telling you guys to try things. I need to try things too. This time I'm going to use the Conair tool again. So pretty. So I want to break up this ink a little bit right here. So you can either use the blending solution or the isopropyl alcohol. They'll both kind of work a little bit differently, but... I think you guys can see now the kind of uh, speed this uh, live is at. It's a very relaxing speed. Again, this is exactly kind of what I needed this week after my big event this past weekend. Um, I was like, oh, I don't want anything too precise. I don't want to have to measure anything. Monday, I was very, very slow. Tuesday, I was a little bit better. Today, I'm a little bit better, but... Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Callie and Debbie. Ooh, yeah. Chaos is different than creative chaos, though, right? You create a lot of fun things out of your studio, Bo. So um, I shared, I think yesterday, I shared how um, messy my, my area was. And I knew I was going to be going live with Kelly for the Crop and Create event. Uh, we did a little meet and greet. And, um, but it is, it is nice when everything does kind of have a home. It does clean up pretty quickly. But if you had told me that last week when I was frantically trying to get stuff done for deadlines before my big event, I was like, I can't clean any of this up. I don't have any time. And then today with a... Uh, a more clear or yesterday with a more clear thought I was like well this isn't going to take that long <laughs> so pretty I'm glad I'm adding this indigo in I'm trying um even though I am adding it I'm trying to keep it pretty light I didn't want it to be too dark and overpowering but I think it's working out so let's see yay Cassie are you playing with your alcohol inks she said she loves that she can play along, so I'm wondering if you are actually digging out your alcohol links right now. So fun. I always love to see how the different colors react together, and honestly, they're reacting even a little different than my originals. And layering... I love the translucentness of these inks. I think that's why I like regular distress more than oxide or I use regular distress more than oxide. I just love the translucentness. I don't know, I'm feeling it. I feel like this might be good. 
I'm gonna just put the Conair tool on it and dry up. Yeah, I'm glad that I uh, put the indigo in, Mary. Again, I was a little nervous. I didn't want it to overpower the background, but I'm pleased. I'm pleased with it. Cassie's plan was to work on crop and create homework, but now she's got her alcohol links out. I love it. That's what I would do. All right, let's see if we can get any of this foil on here. Why not, right? I did just dry it, so it might not pick up a lot. Ooh. So remember, this is like a deco foil foil, not what we're using with our hot foil plates. And I'm just pressing it down and kind of buffing with my finger. So pretty. I love it. All right. So now we're going to um, go ahead and trim this background. I'm going to just close up my inks real quick. I didn't have a catastrophe yet, so I'm going to try to avoid that. Oh, yeah. Definitely make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. Um when you're working with alcohol inks, or you can even choose to wear a mask. But yeah, you wanna be careful with any small animals, pets. I have, um, I think because of the embossing. Oh, this is interesting. Oh yeah, it's because of the embossing. So funny. All right. And then... Then we'll put this, so I'm just trimming these down to be four by, um, four by five and a quarter. Almost like if I were to have used my Lawn Fawn outside in stitched rectangle that I use on almost every card I make. It's funny, when I don't use that die, I end up trimming my background. So I don't know. I don't know which, which is the way to go. All right, I'm gonna pull out a couple card bases, you guys. Look at me with my card bases. If you guys don't know, I did send out, um, I think it was around 120 handmade cards for the holidays um and but most of them were not on card bases and I was also um running late shocker with getting those them out in the mail so everybody got card fronts and I started a new trend at least I'm telling myself that it is the uh you know postcard card in an envelope trend um, let's see. Uh, Callie's doing anything, anything to avoid starting a card. I love it. That's so funny. Brianne's two years behind on crop and create homework. Love it. It's all good, right, Brianne? Because it won't go away. So my ATG gun is still packed away from the event. I have it. I had it at the event that I had this past weekend. Um, showing the awesome holder that I sell on my website, the ATG gun holder. So that's why I'm using this double-sided tape. Um, you don't have to use this. You could just use a runner. Um, but I didn't dig that out just yet. 
Somebody asked if I use the strips. Um, you most certainly could use the strips, but in this case, the stamp doesn't go all the way to the edge because it was a six by six stamp. But for sure, if you cut a strip off of your pretty watercolor back or alcohol linked background, you definitely could use that on a card. <laughs> Monique, you're sticking to your new, new Year's resolution. I'm sticking to my New Year's resolution and putting it on card bases for Get Kraken. I have not been doing a good job with all the other cards I've been sharing this year. Class cards and Get Kraken, I have been good with, but not not all the other cards that I share on my website. <laughs> Baby steps, right? Baby steps. Um, yeah, they're like postcards, but I protected them in envelopes. I mean, it's it's a new trend, you guys, I'm telling you. There's a paper shortage, so I was trying to conserve paper. <laughs> uh, uh, for Christmas cards last year, I started to make sure to add the added to the card base inside message and backside made from and it made cards a lot easier to deal with when the time came I think that's a great idea yep anything that we can do the other thing I kind of wanted to do was to start addressing envelopes ahead of time I'm really bad my addresses are everywhere I've got like a spreadsheet here a spreadsheet there I've got envelopes here um, I think, I feel like my friend Lydia has shared her process for keeping all that organized. Ugh, I'm organized about a lot of things, but some things I'm really lacking on. But what are you going to do, right? I, I'm trying to keep, keep things that I can continually improve on. You don't want to improve on it all at once. All right. Here we go. So we've got our two cards here. And then what I did, and I already pre-did this, is I took Lawn Fawn's um, Scripty Mary. <clears throat> And I die cut it out of white cardstock and um, gold metallic cardstock. They have all these great scripty words that I absolutely love. And I did some sentiment stacking. So I just glued them all together. And that kind of just makes it a little bit of a chunkier sentiment on there, almost like an embellishment. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is also with Lawn Fawn's um, Hearts and Tags, or Hearts and Stars Skinny Tag Die. I love this die because it has the three different sized stars. So I'm gonna cut these out of gold metallic and we're going to add them to the card as well. Brianne says that she can't wait to see what the final tally of my cards are for the year. Uh, for just fun, I'm keeping track of how many cards I make this year. Um, and it's just meant to be fun. It's not a competition or anything like that. But Brianne was asking me towards the end of last year, <clears throat> hey, how many cards do you think you made? I'm like, I don't know. When you add up all my class cards and I make those twice and then the classes I teach with Kelly to retailers and yeah, <clears throat> it's a lot. But um, so for fun, I'm keeping that track of that in a little notebook and we will see at the end of the year. Let's see. Um, or you could spend a day making card bases when you're not feeling creative. I think that's an awesome idea, Sharon. Put on a couple YouTube videos and just make card bases. I've popped on live on Instagram while making card bases, and that way I could answer questions with you guys. I've done that before. Um, Monique says, do you have a post box if people want to send you a postcard this year? Only a postcard, Monique. You can't sell me a full, send me a full-blown card. Um, yes, my post box is post box 1064, so 1064. And it's in Osterville, 
O-S-T-E-R-V-I-L-E, um, mass 02655. I'll try to put that in my on my about page on my website because a few of you have been asking me that lately. Um, so I will do that soon-ish. But it's P.O. Box 1064 in Osterville, Massachusetts. Um, where did you get the cardstock square in your bookcase behind you? Oh, that is from um, Stampin' Storage. I had to think about it for a second. And I do have an affiliate link to them on my Genabler page. And um, so I did a little bit of rearranging in the fall in my studio. Um, behind me, let's see if I go the right way. I never go the right way. But behind me in this corner, there used to be a 12 by 12 paper storage thing. And I got rid of that and I put more cubes and then over there is my big die cut machine and my hot foil um, system. And so I condensed my Lawn Fawn 12 by 12 paper to just that one cube. And that's from Stampin' Storage. Um, let's see, can you use alcohol inks on a, on hot foil backgrounds? Would the alcohol mess up the hot foil? So Jean, I don't believe the alcohol will mess up the hot foil. It's just depending if you can get a good hot foil on a surface that will work with alcohol inks. So I have not tried to hot foil on Yupo or glossy cardstock yet. So that would just be the question about that. Um, I have tried other papers besides Yupo. You do need to use a non-porous surface with alcohol inks. And so I have used glossy cardstock before. I just really like the Yupo the best. So that's pretty much all that I use now. Thanks, Brienne, for linking that. Um, and Tim showed some really cool new mediums to do alcohol inks on. Yes, he has some surfaces um, through Ranger that are really, really fun. And I ordered them, and I have them here. But I haven't played with them enough to feel comfortable doing a live with them. Uh, because I know you guys love to ask questions, and I love that. So I just want to make sure I'm able to answer your questions as best as possible. Ooh, Brienne says that Spellbinders makes hot foilable acetate. It works pretty well. That's good to know. And I know Lawn Fawn's um, acetate is heat resistant as well. So it is quite possible. I just haven't gone down that specific rabbit hole yet. So I'm just breaking up my stars, making a little sprinkling of... Um, different sizes. I'm going to place them very similarly that I do kind of sequins. Three at the bottom, two up at the top in a diagonal is kind of my go-to. And I, I'm going to use Distress Collage Medium to adhere this. I just think it's a little bit stronger than my Lawn Fawn Glue Tube and sticking to the alcohol inks and the embossing and the plastic paper of Yupo. I just kind of like to make sure things aren't going to fall apart. I don't like to send somebody a card that is not going to withstand being displayed for a long time. My dad has so many of my cards up in his bedroom. They're actually like faded a bit and a bit dusty, some of them. But, um, but hey, they are all together. No parts have fallen off. Um, so that's kind of makes me happy to know that my adhesive choices are on point. I don't know why I just put that star on that way. I'm going to do mm -hmm. it with my picker upper tool. Makes it a little bit easier. So I'm placing a little bit of Distress Collage Medium directly to my card. And then I'm going to place the star into it. Don't press the star down completely. Go ahead and let gravity do its course and then you won't have any um, adhesive oozing out of the edges. Which is pretty much exactly how I do 
my sequins. And you can see it didn't take really long to create these two cards. Um, and for my blog post, I had created three. So look at that. This month I got five holiday cards ready to go. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> yep, no glitter this month on these, but the foil is definitely a good substitute. And the gold metallic, I felt the sentiment, you know, I do love a good glitter, all of the things, but sometimes that would be a bit much. So glossy photo paper is not glossy paper, and um, it's totally fine that you want to practice on something but practicing on a surface that has completely different results than what your origin what you're going to eventually work on isn't super helpful um it's almost like trying to learn how to ride a horse and you teach yourself how to do that by riding a cow <laughs> do you know what i mean so one thing about upo is with your blending solution or your isopropyl alcohol, you could put that on the whole background and wipe clean all the ink that you put on it. So if you don't like how something came out, you can pretty much clean off that whole Yupo paper because it is made of plastic and um, start again. So I would really recommend that you practice on Yupo if that's what you're eventually gonna move on to. Um, thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Emmeline and Claire. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys joining me today, whether it be live or if you're catching the replay. Um, in the pinned comment on the chat, I have a link to the blog post where there's more pictures of my cards. I think it's sometimes nice to see them, see the detailed shots of them. Um, and then in the description of this video is a link to most of the supplies that I have used today. So if you've been enabled to need anything, um, but hopefully this has just inspired you to either dust off your alcohol inks or start making your holiday cards, whatever, whatever it is, whatever this, this video today did for you. I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration. So those are the two cards um, that I made today. Remember, I have this fun background um, from the Alcohol Lift Ink, the second stamping. So I'll be able to make this into something. I'm already thinking. I think this is where Prisma Glitter is going to play a role, you guys. And I will. I'll try to make something out of this really soon and share it um, and bring it definitely next month to get cracking on Christmas. Um, and then, yeah, these are the um, two, I thought I had three. I've lost a card. Doesn't take much, you guys. Oh, here it is, it was upside down. So here are the other two I made. And then this is another one I did that's on my blog. This was tricky. This one was using um, gumball and citrus. And it's really tricky. <laughs> to not make brown with these two colors, but I still had fun with it. I was trying to do a little bit more red and green in my non-traditional colors as I do. So there we go, you guys. Five cards all ready to go uh, for Get Cracking on Christmas. So yeah, please give my video a thumbs up if you enjoyed being with me here today. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. And I will be back next month, April, the third Thursday of the month. I will share my Get Kraken on Christmas card on my website, and I'll be sure to let you know when the next live is. Thank you again so much for joining me, and I hope you guys all have a fabulous rest of your week. We're in the middle of it. We can make it to the end. I know we can. It's already spring. I am so excited. Summer will be here before we know it. All right, you guys, have a fabulous day.